Garrett Soloway from InTheMoneyStocks.com is back once again to give us his input on the recent downward price action in gold and silver. This and more on this week's episode of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Garrett Soloway, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? Hey, Patrick. Thanks for having me. I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. All right. Thanks again for being here, Garrett. You know, I want to start with last week where we saw both gold and silver get crushed, hammered, and it's still continuing into this week. What, in your opinion, or through your technical analysis, would offer any type of explanation as to why we're seeing this downward price action? Yeah, so it, it really was a pretty dramatic decline on gold and silver last week. Um, I think the most surprising to me was the extent of the gold decline. Uh, but one of the things to keep in mind is that it seemed like it started with the Federal Reserve coming out and kind of being more hawkish. Now, we didn't see interest rates really respond and sharply move higher. They ended up moving lower. But it seemed like once that initial sell-off in gold got started, there was somewhat of a deleveraging event where you had a lot of investors that were highly, highly leveraged to being long gold. And with the big drop initially on the Fed statement being more hawkish, they then had to reduce exposure, which caused the subsequent downside moves in gold. Um, now, in all fairness, I continue to be very bullish on gold. I've actually used this dip to be a buyer. So I had exited gold recently um, when we had gotten a little too extended. So here's my chart of the GLD. And we can see here, again, you had this pretty dramatic move up, almost consistent upside. And I got out right around here, and it went a little bit higher, but I was waiting to get back in on a pullback. And certainly, we got that pullback. So kind of late last week, I started to accumulate a little bit more. Now, one thing to note, on a technical basis, what's so cool about this dip is it's a 618 Fibonacci retrace from the low here to the high here. So again, we talk Fibonacci levels. I'm sure you're aware of them. I'm sure many of your viewers are aware of them. Um, they're very powerful in, in charts. And the Fibonacci retrace gave me a good basis to say, okay, this retrace gives me a good starting point to accumulate gold at. And that's exactly what I've done. So again, in terms of gold, I think, again, you've got to look at the overall macro issues, which are the printing of money continues, uh, even though the Fed's talking hawkishly, it's not like all of a sudden they're going to stop printing money. It's not, a, not like all of a sudden the government is going to stop having major deficits and debt. And ultimately, that's dilutive to the dollar. So the long term thesis on gold continues to be very, very strong. Yeah. You know, I mean, from an observational viewpoint, why does there seem to be so much resistance at the twenty eight dollar level for silver? Yeah, you know, that that's a good point and a good question. And, and, you know, to me, it just seems like there's this wall built up on silver now right at that level. And part of that could be that there's a lot of investors from the Reddit crowd that got in. And, and you know, as as silver moves up, um, you know, again, we all know that back when there was an attempt to squeeze silver and a lot of people got in and it failed. It, it literally gapped up that day and then came crashing back in. And what happens psychologically is that when people enter a trade and it goes against them immediately, especially to the downside that silver did, you know, investors are very prone to say, okay, I'm almost back to break even, let me sell. You know, it's kind of like, okay, it was a mess up, I made a mistake, but at least I'm getting out basically flat on the trade. And that creates this major resistance point in the charts for us on silver. And I think that's partially what's going on. I also think for me, I've always been a little bit more hesitant on buying silver and being more bullish on silver. It, it, one of the issues here is that silver is an industrial metal, right? So you're having this robust reopening. But the question in my mind is, after the reopening, after this, after everyone spends all the money that they saved during COVID, what happens to that industrial demand? Does it create a little bit of a, a pocket, an air bubble for silver where it could pull back. And you can see very clearly here, I mean, here's your previous pivot on silver on the SLV chart. And there's the gap up, which was the Reddit attempted squeeze. We know it came in here. And basically since then you've been consolidating. And now obviously the latest dip right here has taken you down. I have a trend line here I think it's worth noting, which is this one right here. As a swing trade, I'd be interested in buying silver right into that level for a bounce. Obviously it hasn't gotten there yet, but I would be interested. Now, um, to, be, to be frank, 
I think silver long term, because of the same money printing issues and the dilution of the dollar, is a bullish bet. So if you have a long enough horizon on silver, you'll be more than fine. It's just this next six to 12 months where I'm a little kind of you know, wary of, of what the demand in the industrial side of silver will be versus, versus where it's currently priced. Okay, so let's say if uh, silver should continue just a bit more on the downward track, uh, what are the support levels that you see for silver? So silver, certainly, and let's, let's go back to the charts and just continue to take a look here. And basically, number one is this, this upsloping trend line, right? So, so that's a major, major support on the chart of silver. And you can see, again, it's, it's bounced off of that level from this point to here and to here. So if it comes into that level, and again, I'm just going by the SLV levels here. And I, so that's at 2315. You can kind of match it up to the, S, the, the silver spot price, if you wish. If we did break that trend line, then there is another major, major support, which I think actually could be a low pivot for a longer term major accumulation zone down here. And you can see this was really the breakout, the beginning of this move up here. So a retrace to that down here would give you major support. It's what we call a retrace to the scene of the crime, the scene of the crime being the breakout itself in, in technical terms. And then what I love about that is you have this pivot here as well as this pivot. So there's just so much support there that even if we do see a glut on silver in terms of maybe a lower demand in the next 12 months, I don't think it goes below that. And I think that would be the spot to really accumulate some major size on silver for a bigger breakout. Because I mean, to be clear, my longer term view on silver is that it's gonna take out the Reddit highs, these highs up here and get a monumental move up, you know, maybe 40, 50 bucks even in, in you know, the next couple of years. It's just a matter of getting through this little patch over the next six to 12 months that has me a little bit kind of wary on it. Yeah, because that looks like a pretty big swing. I mean, we're looking at, you know, about $30 on one level and then we're looking at about 18 or so on, on the other level. That's that's a pretty volatile range there. But um, despite the fall in prices last week, the weekly and monthly charts for silver, they still do show higher lows so far. So are you still expecting that? I mean, no, we just touched on this, but are you still expecting that $30 breakout in a few weeks, in a few months, or has this started to stretch out a bit more? Yeah, I mean, the timing of it is always the trickiest thing, right? I mean, it's it's easy to say, like, with the stock market, it's like, well, eventually we're going to have a, a big correction in the market. It's it's a matter of really timing it that's the trickiest thing. Again, I would probably wager that the silver breakout will be, you know, outside of the 6 to 12 month range. So may, maybe towards the 12 month or a little bit more, that's where you'll get the momentum swing. I think that's also where we start to realize in the U.S. that the um, the, the inflation we're seeing is not fully transitory. The Fed, you know, even Jerome Powell today testifying, he said, oh, you know, yes, inflation's a little higher than we thought, but we still think it's transitory. I think you'll see a switch over over the next six to 12 months where the Fed starts to say, okay, it, it's not fully transitory. And that's going to be also a positive for the metals. So, you know, again, you just with silver, you have this tricky situation where you know, gold's more simple. It's a store of safety. It's, it's where people run for when they get scared. With silver, you have this industrial side plus the store of safety, and you have to kind of weather through that. And that's the kind of question mark I have is, is with the economic growth right now, once we get through that, where does that leave us with the demand for silver on that side? versus the inflation side. And those two will be battling, which is why, you know, yes, it looks like a big move down on silver possible if it breaks that upsloping trend line. But in, in reality, silver has always been a very volatile metal. And, and I think, again, you just use it as buying opportunities. With dealers having physical supply issues still for over a year now, causing premiums to still remain high, what would you say to physical silver investors, buy, sell, or hold? I would say if you're a physical holder, I would I would hold for sure. Um, I, I don't necessarily think I would be a buyer right here, uh, but certainly it's not a situation where you say, oh, well, silver is never going to be in demand again. I mean, it, it certainly is. And it's certainly especially with this massive inflation that we're seeing, you want to have silver. I have silver bullion myself that I hold. I have gold bullion. Um, I love having the physical. Um, it makes me feel confident that, you know, if the bank shut down ever, I have that that little safety net to go to. 
Uh, so all those reasons are reasons, especially in this inflationary environment where you want to have physical. And I would just hold it at this point. I mean, even if you get a dip, I would say just, you know, think about it like this, right? Let's say you have your net worth. Let's just take an average, average person that has a hundred thousand dollar net worth. You know, you would probably say, okay, you know, assuming that's outside of your living space, your home, you would want to say, all right, 10% at a minimum should be in the metals, right? So gold, silver, platinum, whatever it may be. And as you make more money, just continue to say, okay, 10% of what I'm saving goes to those places. And this way, even if it goes lower, your dollar cost averaging, and then at some point, again, you were going to get, you're going to get this move up in silver as well as gold that, that will be very profitable. Okay. So got to ask you this, otherwise I'm going to get it from the people out there in the comment section. Uh, you said you're not a buyer for silver right now. What number are you looking at before Gareth Soloway starts buying silver again? Absolutely. So on, on a swing trade basis, I would accumulate, see this. So the trend lines really are, are my levels that I follow. So I would start accumulating a little bit down here, which is not very much lower. You know, you're talking around 23 on the SLV and we're right at 24. So, I mean, that's less than 5% lower. Um, and then if it breaks that, I would probably, you know, your, your options would be just to pick up small, small positions at these previous pivots. So pivot one, pivot two, and then this would be the majority. This is kind of where, if it gets to that, where I would go quite heavily into it. Um, but I, one of the things I like to do in trading is that I don't like to just rely on one specific point. I've done that in my career, in my early years, and half the time I'm wrong on my entry, my initial entry, and it goes lower and I'm out of the money 10 or 15% before it goes in the money. The other times I miss the trade totally. So what I've done in my career is, is fine tune it and, and kind of it's a humble thing. The market humbles you and you want to be in a point where you say, OK, I don't know the exact level silver is going to bottom out at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just buy little bits as it comes down. My overall average will be low when the bigger move comes up. And that way, again, you just kind of make sure you have toes in the water in case it doesn't get to your lowest point. Garrett Soloway from InTheMoneyStocks.com. We appreciate the time you've given us and hope we can do it again soon. Absolutely, Patrick. It has truly been a pleasure and, and I look forward to it, doing it again soon. Thank you. There you go. A trader's insight on the downward volatility in precious metals. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comments section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. And I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.